Hello, this is Bunting, and today we will be covering Thriftwork style sound design and arrangement using Vital. Alright, hope you like that little arrangement because in just a moment I will be showing you each and every sound and thing I did to make it that way. Right? But before I begin with the drums, I'm asking that you please like the video. That would help me out a lot, as well as subscribing if you enjoy my content. Also, in the comments, if you have any questions about what I do in this video, or any suggestions for future videos for an artist or a concept or anything, please leave that in the comments. That would be awesome. I do read them and reply to them. So, all right. Right away, into the thick of it, right? With the drums. As for BPM, around 120 to 140 is where a lot of Thriftwork stuff tends to lie. You know, just feel it out, do what you want with that. But I think sample selection is pretty important for this kind of style, you know? Because if you're trying to get funky and a little subtle with it, more melodic, you don't want slamming dubstep drums, like doofing in your eardrums quite obnoxiously, right? You want something a little more acoustic and subtle. and. The biggest part of that, of course, you want a kind of thumpy kick and more so an acoustic snare, right? And lucky for you, right? In my waves pack here, I have a ton of acoustic y sounding snares as well as kicks, you know, all like that. Plenty to choose from and more in the free pack, right? But everything on my website, of course, there's a lot of free stuff, but everything paid, that's 40% off just for tonight. That's because I am trying to move out soon and every little bit of support helps. You know, and you get a ton of stuff all for, yeah, $18, as well as a bunch of free pack, which are free to use, free to download, no royalties, no catches, anything like that, right? Yeah, but I dig the samples. It's what I use, and I like them. But sellout time aside, right? Thank you. But the drums. What's going on with the drums? Beyond being a drum pattern, right? He gets a little more funky with his stuff. And by funky, I mean like kind of offbeat, off-kilter. Right, and what does offbeat actually mean? It means you see these beats, these one, two, three, four, right, so on and so forth. You want to hit more in these little subdivisions, right? Right, especially in kind of triplet patterns. You can turn on the uh, triplet grid like this, and you could see the kind of triplet and lay it on there, right? But as long as you're hitting in these subdivisions pretty often, right? It's going to sound pretty off kilter, you know, overall, I still recommend you to kind of beatbox it out or tap it out and kind of um, transpose it or transcribe it into your DAW from there, you know, so you get a good groove with your banging bunting samples, right? But next thing I have is these hats, right? So what's going on with the hats is, again, my lovely samples, right? But, you know, a little bit of a roll, kind of trappy influence roll here with offbeat stuff, you know? His stuff sounds very off-kilter, so you want to kind of capture that head bobby groove, but it would feel a bit weird. And the hat kind of follows the same principle. You know, I'm getting some kind of divisions here and here. You know, what you might want to do is if you look at the bottom here, you'll see this little knob or this little slider, right? And what this is, it's velocity. So it basically just affects your volume. But one volume isn't going to make a difference. But over time, if you're affecting the volume kind of swelling up, it makes it kind of roll smoother, you know, and creates a more human feel. So I'll recommend just going through your hats especially. You can do it with other drums, but I think hats especially benefit. To give it that human feel, just more acoustic-y, real, warm-sounding type of thing, right? And then I add this little triangle hit. You know, Thriftworks has a lot of percussion work. For this track, I didn't choose to do a whole lot because I felt like there was enough. But if you want a bunch of percussion, just get any samples you want, really. Range them rhythmically. You know, just get anything you want and work it in there. Some things work better than others, but you really can't go wrong. Yeah, as you can see. It's not rocket science to incorporate that kind of stuff and plenty of good percussions in my pack as well and all that supports me your boy so now the bass 
first I'll get into the sound design and then how you can kind of write a groove, you know, because I know you fellows on this channel are all about the sound design. But sorry to say, Thriftworks, his sound design is rather basic and his arrangement is where he really shines, right? But as for the sound design, it sounds like a pretty cool sound, right? But it's actually quite simple. All we have here is saw wave, right? Let me freeze stuff so it stops lagging. Okay, so here we have a saw wave with all this is is a filter. And as you see, when you mess with this cutoff, it gives you some very interesting movement, right? So let me just initialize this so I can really show you. Just turn on the filter, and you're basically there. You can have more or less resonance to have more or less kind of squelchiness, right? Versus this, no real squelchiness. This has a bunch of squelchiness. But Thriftworks liked a lot of squelchiness, and I think it's cool. It gives it some more interesting movement, I think. Um, you might not always want it, but use it to your taste. But when I did this wave, right, cut off of this filter, I drew it in by hand what I had. I want to move right as you see. So you see this automation, the cutoff is moving in real time, swelling up and plucking all around. Gives it some very interesting movement and variation, which is really cool, I think. But yeah, beyond that, you can change the basic shape. Sometimes you use this more of a square wave. Sometimes a sine wave, right? Except the filter doesn't do anything to a sine wave, right? But really experiment, try different basic shapes. Here's one thing to note. Sometimes you hear more of an 808 thumpy style sub bass. In that case, just take your basic shape, shape your envelope with a bit of release on it. And that's basically it. Just a sign of that plucky, sustained, really envelope. And yeah, you're cooking. One more thing for some added variation is you can make this slope steeper. Makes it sound a bit tighter with a bit less high end. That's because it's cutting off the high end more steeply, as you see there. Right, another preference for you to choose, right? But how do you rate these funky bass lines, you know? Because beyond the sound design, the bass line and the drums is really what makes it shine. As with everything, I recommend you just hear it out in your head or beatbox it out and then lay it down. You know, for example, I would just sit here and be, if I it worked right, I would sit here thinking to myself something like, you know, I mean, as silly as it is, singing it out can really help. And the wow, wow, wow would be drawn in by your cutoff. You know, wow is a similar type of sound, right? But the rhythm over everything, make sure to stick around your root note, whatever key your song is in, in this case, A sharp or B flat, and write your bass line around that. As you see down here, I hit an F which is really good for resolving to this uh, A sharp because if you count up in the scale, one, two, three, four, five, F is the fifth, which happens to resolve very well to that first. For more stuff on the theory, I have a whole theory video on my channel with some tricks to make it easier to work your way around theory. But theory is just another way to more easily transpose what's in your head into the doll, which is what it's all about. So yeah, get groovy with it. For our next synth here, we have kind of a wobbly pad, right? Let me turn off the EQ and go into Vital, show you what's up. Now for a lot of Thriftwork sound, they all pretty much use basic shapes and some kind of filtering with maybe some subtle volume automation, right? So as you see, a saw wave again, right, with this filter, just playing chords and higher up gives you a whole new sound to work with. Pretty much the same sound, just executed slightly differently. So let's start out with our saw wave, turn on filter, and you're already there. Now, we probably don't want to mess with this filter by hand, so what we can do is get an LFO. 
that moves it for us, and we can make it go faster or slower, and we can change where it starts and how much it wobbles. I like a little subtle bit of wobble. Again with the resonance, you can have it straighter or a bit squelchier, right? But here's something more you can do to really mess with the timbre of your sound, and that's layer other oscillators, right? So. By default, it's not going to go into your filter. You need to click here, and now it goes into filter. You can also click, it goes into filter one or one and two, right? But it's still not going to sound different because it's pretty much playing the same exact thing as oscillator one. And that's where this pitch comes in. If you press, if you, well, if you click on it and hold shift and drag it up, you will move about 12 at a time, which is a good, brighter kind of tone. Good. As you see, without it, with it. And you can adjust the level of this, have the low end be like heavier in the mix, or the top end be heavier. And you could layer another two octaves up, route it through. And as you see, the possibilities are really endless in just the subtle layers you do. Beyond that, pick a different basic shape for a layer. How about a triangle? How about for this, maybe a square? And as you see, we can also maybe mess with the slope of it. And we have a whole new pad right there. You know, you can change the rate. You can change a lot of stuff very subtly. You know, all with basic shapes, but you'll find you'll get a lot of different results. As for the effects, all I really added was a bit of chorus, which gives it this nice depth and stereo to it, which just sounds nice, you know, and a bit of reverb just to help it fill out the mix more and sound all beautiful. Another thing you could do, have more reverb. That could be cool. You can have a bit of delay. All stuff Thriftworks would use and just sounds good in general. You can turn the LFO really slow make it sound beautiful and have a good time with it right something to note you can get all the presets i made in this right as well as the project file if you support me on patreon the link for that is in the description on the website and all that goes to your boy directly i appreciate that but on to the next sound so our next sound is this kind of plucky thrift work lead and this uses a lot of the same techniques as before, except one kind of newish technique, right? Well, not new, but new for this tutorial. As you see, basic shapes, different levels, with a bit of a filter, right? But a lot of this interest comes from this volume shaper. So let me show you what an envelope, volume envelope would do. So pretty boring, pretty beat boopy, right? But if you suddenly drag this down, you can make it pluckier, right? You add a bit of release though, and all of a sudden, it suddenly sounds a lot more beautiful, in my opinion. Right? So on top of that, we can add a filter. We can put a second envelope on the filter. To and let's shape this filter to kind of pluck in a different way, slightly different way. Oops, I accidentally added it to that. You can right click remove, and then put it on the right cutoff. And as you see, just shaping this filter subtly and change the amount, a ton of different sounds to work with. Let's layer this lower and layer one higher. Let's put this through the filter. And you're basically set for a pluck. As with all the sounds, just slight different basic shapes get you very different results and different levels and you'll have a fun time for all. One thing you do that I didn't show you is introduce some unison voices for a more kind of like stereo detuned effect. Uh, turn down the detune amount. And yeah, that's a slightly different timbre. You might not hear it a lot in um, Thrishwork stuff, but it's still something cool to experiment with nonetheless, especially on pads. You can add chorus to this, but I didn't add anything except reverb. And there's so many variations you can do to this. One thing that's cool is to have a bit of attack, right? So let's add a bit of attack to our envelopes. 
And that bit of attack almost makes it hit more like a violin or a flute even, because they don't pluck in like a plucky thing, like a piano or, or I don't know, like a mallet in the wood. They subtly flow in, which you could see with this attack. You can see it visually, thanks to Vital's amazingness. Yeah, but no attack, pluck here. Yeah, do what you will with that. And when you write a melody, hear it out in your head, watch the theory video, learn piano, learn an instrument, all that stuff helps with those. Now for our final synth patch before we get to this little vocal sample. A sparkly arpeggio, right? So let me just keep this on so I can show you the sound design. As you'll see, this is very similar, if not identical, in a lot of ways to what I just did. We have two um, triangle waves, right? They're both up pretty high. I just turned it up here so I can have it higher up, right? But a lot of the interest comes from this flute-like attack, right, with a low, low sustain, low release. I mean, low decay sustain and a bit of release added. Added a bit of chorus and a bit of reverb for a bit more depth and texture and added a slight rounding off of the high end with this filter just to make it slightly less bright. As with all the sounds, very subtle changes in the levels, the shapes, the pitches, and the filtering can give you very different results. You can also use bandpass filters if you want, high pass filters, but low pass filters seem to be the move in a lot of the times. So one last thing you'll hear in a lot of Thriftworks stuff that's pretty characteristic of him is a lot of samples, right? And the first thing to worry about is where do you actually get samples, right? Of course, my website, no. I don't get my vocal samples from my website, but you can get them just from YouTube if you look up acapella samples, right? Studio acapella, and then look up uh, YouTube to MP3. And basically just find a video, copy the URL, and paste it in here to download an acapella, right? That's where I get my acapellas. Just dig through them. You know, it's a lot of just luck and digging, right? But once you find a good sample, basically what I did with this sample is I transposed it around, right? You know, I prefer Complex Pro with the formants on zero. Get That gives you the cleanest result versus beat sounds quite glitchy, right? And you can feel free to chop it up to even reverse it, to mess with an all phase. Just get some nice tones out of it, you know? You can use the tuner, Ableton's tuner, if I show you it in a second. Ableton's tuner under audio effects here. If you don't have a great ear, you can vaguely find the key it's in. So right here, it's hitting about this F, right, which I know is in the key of B. So it will sound fine, you know, but overall I trust my ear a lot of the time. Your ear will improve and you'll find if you really test it, it's pretty good. And then I pitched it differently, differently for this one. This one is about hitting um, C and B flat, I would say, you know, even though the tuner is kind of off. That's because the vocal isn't perfect either, right? But yeah, make sure it's in your key. Watch my theory video for all about that, right? But as for some processing to make this more deep and interesting, the EQ and vocals is always nice. You know, I cut a lot of the mids, right, just because mids can sound quite muddy and it will clash a lot with the other elements. You know, watch the mixing video for more about that. Uh, add a bit of chorus. This is just Ableton's default chorus effect. It adds a bit of stereo and just a cool effect, I think. On top of that, a bit of echo. I just try Ableton's default echo and turn the dry wet down, right? So it's not switched out, just effect. And I literally just drag in stock reverb with a bit of extra decay time. Decay time really makes it sound washed out. And altogether, it sounds pretty nice, I think. Of course, I mess with some of the elements. One more thing on this, I add an OTP to make it brighter and louder. Yeah, but altogether, you get a thrift worksy arrangement. You know, 
but the sound design, as you could tell, is not the heaviest point of this style. You know, a lot of it is in the melodies, in the arrangement, just in the creativity of how you put it, you know. But really, in the end, uh, you can learn a lot of theory, but it'll always come down to what's in your head, what you imagine, what you put into the doll, and that's what will make it beautiful. You know, for a lot of you sound design guys, this is going to be especially challenging. But even if you're not going to get the melodies down right away, keep experimenting, keep trying at it, and you'll really figure it out. At least now you have some general lead sound design knowledge if you ever want to incorporate that into your stuff. Because a lot of dubstep guys, like, comes to leads, they're clueless. You know, I know I was there when I first got into this stuff. But, yeah. I mean, I don't know what else to say at this point. Um, wait, can I make my thing work? Okay. Well, it's not working, but thanks for watching. Again, all my website stuff, everything in my shop is 40% off just for tonight or today or whatever. That's because I am trying to move out. So every little bit counts. If Even if you don't have the money, just get those free packs because, yeah, I like helping you out. I like providing banger samples for your tunes. Uh, just check out the description. There's a bunch of stuff in there. You can also join a Discord, which is a community with me and a bunch of other dudes. But... Yeah, that's that. Like the video, comment on the video, any suggestions for future stuff, and subscribe if you enjoyed. And I'm done talking because I can't think of anything else to possibly say, right? But thanks again for watching. Love you guys. Peace out.